Released on December 12, 1983, the legendary American horror punk band The Misfits released their second and final full-length album titled Earth AD slash Wolf's Blood. The band went for a more hardcore sound that featured heavy guitar feedback, heart-pounding drum fills, and lyrics referencing topics like the occult. Recording the album began almost immediately following their Santa Monica show with headliner Black Flag and opener The Vandals. Their setlist that night included six songs that would be featured on the new record. After the show, the band took SST record sound engineer and producer Glenn Lockett to record the initial sessions inside of a friend's concrete garage. They stayed up recording from midnight to 9 the following morning. It was Jerry only on bass, Doyle on guitar, Robo on drums, and Glenn Danzig, asleep for most of the session, only laying down vocals for three out of the seven tracks. Their former drummer, Arthur Googie, played with the band during their Walk Among Us era, but quit after a heated argument with Glenn over wanting a second McDonald's cheeseburger. This was during a financially disastrous tour that cost them a total of three grand, which was loaned by Jerry and Doyle's father. Robo, from Black Flag, took Arthur's place and influenced their sound to steer towards a more thrash style of punk that carried elements of metal. Originally planned as a double album, Side A contained tracks from Earth AD and Side B, Wolf's Blood. The front cover took artist Mark Hoffman a total of 300 hours to draw. All four band members are depicted on the cover as grotesque zombies. The illustration found on the backside was pre-existing artwork by Anthony Stockard, who originally used the drawing for a poem by John Milton titled L'Allegro. In order to capture the brutal sound of the album, Jerry placed his amp one way, Doyle's face the other, and Robo sat between the two stacks, creating a literal wall of noise. The guitar feedback heard throughout the record was a result of Jerry and Doyle throwing their instruments on the floor and recording the results. The band's shows were notorious for their chaotic energy, often encouraged by their commitment to the horror image. One show in particular had animal carcasses hung all around the venue. They were purchased from a nearby butcher shop. Outside of their shows, the band continued to stir controversy in the pursuit of the macabre. One early morning after a show in St. Louis, the band, along with some fans, searched for the burial plot of voodoo practitioner Mary Lavu. All four members of the band spent the night in jail for trespassing, only to skip their court date to continue their tour. Those initial demos the band recorded inside of the concrete garage successfully captured the destructive high energy of their live shows. And for a moment, it seemed as if the band had gone through a collective breakthrough. However, Glenn was ultimately displeased by the direction the band was heading and felt this way for quite some time. He took the album's demos to New Jersey's Fox Studio to finish the project. In an interview with graphic artist Brian Schroeder, he had this to say. Now you don't like Earth D, Earth AD, correct? I don't like Earth AD, huh? And why is that? I just think there's a lot more going on there that no one ever got to hear. What do you mean Earth a lot AD. more going on? Well, the way I like to do records, I like to add stuff in there and give them all layers and textures and stuff. It could have still had their wall of noise stuff, but I would have liked to add added some more stuff in there. And also, my vocals... I don't like I don't like the way Spot records, per, you know, for my taste, and I don't like the way he records vocals at all. My vocals are too thin, and they're kind of buried in everything. In the book American Hardcore: A Tribal History, Arthur Stephen Blush interviewed Jerry Only, who told him, "Glenn doesn't even know what's on that tape, cause he wasn't awake when we did it. I know the way he mixes. He tries to save money and do it in these rinky dinky places. People consider it the thrash metal bible." To a certain extent, it is, but it broke up the band. There were plans to embark on a European tour following the record's release, but plans quickly fell through as tensions in the band increased, reaching a breaking point at their Halloween show in Detroit.
Robo had quit the band shortly after the album's release, and with plans to tour overseas quickly approaching, the band hired Brian Keats, who got drunk before the Halloween show, impairing his ability to keep up with the Misfits' breakneck speed. Doyle lifted Brian from his shirt's collar and escorted him off stage. Todd Swallows from the Necros took over for the remainder of that set. That same night, Glenn abruptly announced the end of the band. From the ashes of the Misfits came Sam Hain, Glenn's follow-up band. Leaning towards a more goth-inspired death rock sound, Glenn had been planning his departure from the Misfits, and it so happened that their Halloween show fell on the beginning of Sam Hain. Traditionally, Sam Hain, pronounced Sawin, was a Celtic holiday celebrated by the pagans, marking the end of the harvesting season and the beginning of winter. This time of year was associated with death, and they believed the veil between the living and dead grew thinner around this time of year. Tracks like Death Comes Ripping and Blood Feast were originally intended for Samhain's debut, but were included in the Misfits' final album in a quote, last ditch effort to save the band. Despite the album's mixed reception amongst band members, the record became a staple of the hardcore scene and went on to inspire bands that would follow after the Misfits' demise, most notably Slayer. The album is an essential piece of the band's legacy, and its influence would ring in the ears of those lucky enough to hear the band perform it live for years to come. Hey, Danny, how free? Snow cowboy, the finish not worth one. No, 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 no.